One of the biggest tragedies in football history. The ban of all English clubs from European competitions for five years and the creation of the Premier League. All of these three things are effects of a single event, the infamous Heisel disaster of 1985. I recently made a poll on Instagram asking you guys if you actually know about this dramatic event. And shockingly enough, 66% of you did not know about the Heisel disaster. That is such an important event in the history of European football. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the sad story of Heisel. What is the background? What exactly happened? And what effect did it have on football? Let's go! We are going a few decades back in time, precisely to the 29th of May 1985. It was the day of the yearly final of the European Cup, the equivalent to today's Champions League. And the two teams involved were Juventus from Italy and Liverpool from England, both absolute European giants and at the time, undebatably, the two most powerful and the two best teams in the world. Juventus were stacked with stars from Italy's 1982 World Cup winning team, such as Paolo Rossi, Marco Tardelli or Gaetano Chirea. And in addition, their French playmaker Michel Platini was the best player in the world at the time. Whilst Liverpool had probably been the most dominant team in Europe over the last decade, winning six English league titles and four European Cups. So this match really was the absolute best of what world football had to offer in 1985. And thus millions of fans throughout the world were looking forward to this final. So where would this iconic game take place? Well, this is where it gets controversial. First of all, the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium in Madrid was available as a venue for this final, just like the Camp Nou in Barcelona. And it has to be noted that both of these stadiums had just been renovated and modernized in recent years for the FIFA World Cup 1982 in Spain. So both of them were in a very good condition and definitely capable of hosting such a final. But nevertheless, UEFA decided against these two logical options. And instead, they let the European Cup final take place in the Heisel Stadium in Brussels, Belgium. The stadium was built in 1930, so it was already 55 years old at the time. That alone is of course not a big problem. But the fact that no one had really cared about it nor maintained it for the last years meant that it was in a really poor state in 1985. Even worse, it was in such a bad condition that large parts of the stadium were literally falling apart. And actually everyone at the time knew that this stadium was by no means capable of hosting such a big final. But despite loud protests from both Liverpool and Juventus officials, UEFA stick to their decision of playing the game right there. Later it turned out that the UEFA officials approved the stadium for the final after a sloppy inspection of only 30 minutes. And technically, it didn't even meet the UEFA requirements for European Cup Finals. Corruption might have been involved in this risky decision that later turned out to be fatal. But let's have a closer look at the stadium itself and the stands. The public interest in this game was of course huge, and so the stadium ended up being crammed with almost 60,000 fans, more than its actual capacity. In this graphic you can see how the tickets were being distributed by UEFA. The white blocks O, N and M on the right here were reserved for the Juventus fans, while the red blocks X and Y were reserved for the Liverpool fans. The dark grey stands at the top and at the bottom were for neutral fans. And the tricky part here is block Z on the bottom left corner. The tickets for this block were supposed to be given to neutral fans as well, but some corrupt UEFA officials sold the tickets to travel agencies, mostly Italian. And these Italian travel agencies sold them on to mostly Juventus fans. So even though this block Block Z right next to the Liverpool fans in Block X was supposed to be filled with neutral fans to prevent Juventus and Liverpool fans facing each other directly, it ended up being filled mostly with Juventus fans, creating exactly this situation that UEFA wanted to prevent. Now you might be asking yourselves why did they even want to prevent it, isn't it a normal thing to have fans of both teams right next to each other nowadays? In today's football it is often the case, yes. But you have to keep in mind that the 1970s and also the 1980s were famous for very violent fan bases, especially in England, so brutal conflicts between fan bases of different teams happened on a weekly basis. Well, after all, you can already spot this dark red arrow ranging from Liverpool block X to neutral slash Juventus block Z. This dark arrow is basically the Heisel disaster, and here is what happened. So one hour before kickoff, Liverpool fans in block X and Juventus fans in block Z stood almost right next to each other, only divided by an old weak fence that could be broken within seconds. Additionally, at this fence, there was a group of eight police officers from the Belgian police, yes, I repeat, eight, to divide these fan bases of thousands. Well, you can imagine what happened. Hooligans from the two fan bases started throwing flares, bottles, and stones at each other. 
The fact that they took these stones from the crumbling stands of the stadium shows how poor the condition of Heisel really was. And as kickoff was approaching, the action became more serious in the block. The real horror started when the Liverpool hooligans in Block X managed to break through the boundaries, overpower the Belgian police and started to charge at the terrified Juventus fans in Block Z. Eyewitnesses report that many Liverpool fans had weapons such as knives, batons and even pistols. So genuinely scared for their life, thousands of Juventus fans started to flee in the same direction. They were all running towards the perimeter wall at the end of Block Z, hoping to somehow find a way of escaping the stadium. Some lucky ones, as you see in this picture, managed to escape to the pitch. But a big majority was trapped in between the wall and the violent Liverpool hooligans attacking them. As you see in this picture, eventually the lower part of the perimeter wall collapsed under the pressure of the Juventus fans. This caused some fans to be able to escape, but it also buried many under the stones. And a few were also able to climb up the upper part of the wall to escape the block. But after all, in this mass panic, thousands of fans were crushed and run over and for many it was fatal. Overall, this tragedy cost the lives of 39 people and 600 were injured in the masses. Here is a shocking picture of how Block Z looked after this catastrophe. And what might be even more shocking is that despite big protests from the players who were waiting in the dressing room and not expecting to play, the game was actually started a few hours later. Because UEFA and the police decided that it would only cause even more violence had they suspended the game. The fact that Juventus achieved their biggest ever club success by winning the European Cup after beating Liverpool 1-0 with a Michel Platini penalty became almost irrelevant. So now that you know what happened on this day, let's look at the consequences of this tragedy. After thorough investigations, it was decided that Liverpool fans alone were to blame for this catastrophe. And 14 of them were convicted to prison sentences of several years due to manslaughter. UEFA then even went so far to ban all English clubs from any European competition for the next five years. And Liverpool themselves even got one year on top of that. They were not allowed to participate in UEFA competitions for six years. So why did UEFA ban all English clubs if only Liverpool fans made the mistake? Well that is because England as a whole in the 1980s had a huge problem with hooliganism and violence in stadiums. And UEFA was simply scared that fan bases of other English clubs might replicate what the Liverpool fans did there to the Juventus fans. Whether this decision was fair or not, that is a different question. But after all, what were the effects of this severe ban on English football? Obviously, this was a huge blow for all English top teams that weakened the game in the motherland of football as a whole. Before the incident, the English league, first division as it was back then called, was undebatably the best in the world. English teams had won seven of the last eight European Cups, with the winners being Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest and of course Liverpool. But after the punishments for the Heisel disaster, this dominance was blown away. No European competitions for English teams of course meant less money, less competitiveness and less general interest in the league. The three Lions had a very promising generation at that time and many English players of this generation actually left the island to move to countries like Spain or Italy. So of course the league was nowhere as good as it was before, clubs were financially struggling and a major rebuild was needed. But every rebuild creates opportunities and that was also the case for English football after 1985. First of all, the Heisel disaster really marked the point where English clubs and also the UK government seriously started to fight their hooligans. With several measures and more severe punishments, hooligans and violent fans were driven more and more out of the English stadiums. A big focus also laid on more modern and safer stadiums. The Heisel disaster combined with the Hillsborough incident of 1989 eventually led to English clubs completely banning standing and only allowing seating in their stadiums. These changes over the next years would make the atmosphere in English stadiums a lot friendlier. And of course it also created a better image abroad. It turned a financially broken league in crisis into a flourishing landscape for footballers that was finally relevant for global marketing again. And thus the broadcasting revenue of the English first division also started to increase. Finally, this all led up all the way to the creation of the Premier League in 1992. English clubs had learned from their mistakes and the problems in their fan bases. They finally managed to create a safer atmosphere around their game that was once so violent. And then they managed to create what is now the most popular and richest national football league in the world, the Premier League. So after all, what conclusion can we draw from the Heisel disaster? 
This sad tragedy at the end of the day did not have to happen. These 39 lives could have been saved if it wasn't for a horrible planning of UEFA and the Belgian officials. Plus the disgraceful behaviour of the violent Liverpool hooligans. But luckily, football clubs from England and the whole world also took their learnings from this disaster and it paved the way for many positive developments in the world of football, such as eradicating large parts of the violent hooligan scene and making stadiums safer in general to prevent these catastrophes from happening again in the future. But nevertheless, the Heisel disaster of 1985 remains one of the saddest and most influential tragedies in football history. And I personally believe it is very important that today's generation of football fans does not forget about important events of football history like the Heisel disaster. And this is why I will keep telling these stories here on my channel. Let me know what you want me to cover next. In the meantime, I will quote this memorial sign that you can find outside of Anfield nowadays. In remembrance of the 39 supporters who lost their lives at the Heisel stadium. In memoria e amicizia. Viago is out. Peace.